do it again. Hi, I'm John, and these are the rest of the Chinese. And uh, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you into a mysterious Chinese world to get to help you to get into know what we're thinking and who we really are. Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, by having such an Asian look in Israel, people are too loud content. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Remember emotional intelligence when somebody is talking, the first priority is to give full attention to your colleagues. Yeah. Wait okay. a second with the... Debbie. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Debbie. Okay, can I continue? Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, people ask me a lot of questions. Uh, and the, first, uh, the most common one is like, where are you from? And that's an easy one. I say, I'm from Taiwan. And they say, Taiwan? Oh, China! Oh, China, China, China! <laughs> yes, I almost like start rolling my eyes. So, first of all, let me just be clear. Taiwan is not part of China. Or any Taiwan is an independent country. So, even though that China claims that we're they're one of them, but we're actually not. Yeah. But, uh, however, we do share the same culture and the same history. Um, Back in the days before Jesus, we were united as one, and we have been through a lot of things. We were conquered, and we conquered a lot of countries. And uh, in the in 1945, uh, there is a Chinese Civil War, and unfortunately, we kind of lost the war. So <laughs> we changed back to the small island, which is called Taiwan. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, Israel is founded in 1948, and uh, China is founded in 1949, so actually China is like kind of younger than this. And then uh, there's a lot of common things and difference between we and China. Like uh, we, use, we all speak Chinese, but uh, we use traditional Chinese, which is on the right hand side, and then use simplified Chinese. And we have different currencies, we use like uh, national <coughs> Taiwan dollar, yeah, no, yeah, a new Taiwan dollar, yeah. And they use German B. Okay? And the most cool one is that we have different passports, so we're different. <laughs> <laughs> and but we do share the same things, like uh, we share this we celebrate the same festival like Chinese New Year and we have the Chinese medicine. You guys know that, like acupuncture, shopping things. And we have Chinese calligraphy and Chinese gold food, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And what else? So, uh, the second question that people usually ask me is that, do you have a religion? Uh, well, um, yes and no. Like, we have many kind of religions in, 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 in our country. There are Buddhism, Taoism, Christians, many things. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, what really in our mind is that we it's our philosophy. There's a hundred of school of philosophy in, in, in China, but uh, we all agree that the most important one and the most influential one would be the Confucianism. Confucianism. Uh, yeah, it sounds Confucian. <laughs> uh, Confucianism, uh, very obviously, is founded by Confucius. I don't know if anybody knows him. Um, he is. Yeah, he's this old guy. Um, uh, he is a um, teacher, an editor, and a politician, and also a philosopher. Um, and he has very high reputation in Chinese society. Um, he is recognized uh, as the extremely sage departed teacher. Um, what, do we, what do we call him that? Because, you know, uh, back in the Asian days, uh, education is a privilege for royal family and the riches. But he is the first one who bring the education to normal people, like you. So, and uh, one thing very famous is that he makes, yeah, he makes no social distinction in teaching. So that's why he's called the extremely safe departed teacher. And the central dogma in, in Confucianism is this one. It's called Ren. Ren is not, not him, it's Ren. <laughs> this sounds the same. Um, so what is Ren? Ren is uh, a very complex and big concept. Uh, here's how it says it on Wikipedia. The good feeling, 
uh, let's just human experience when being altruist, uh, altruistic. Yeah, 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 right. Okay, it's still very confusing. So let's see what Confucius say about it. Right? Um, uh, he says many different parts of it to his uh, his students. Uh, but whenever a student asks him what is REM, and he answers differently because he teaches according to his student's <coughs> natural ability. And here are some of them. Uh, he used once he said that one should REM is that one should see nothing improper, hear nothing improper, say nothing improper, do nothing improper. So which basically means you. You'll be good. <laughs> yeah. And the next one, is there anyone who wants to read first? We got a small gift for you. Wishing to be established in time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seek also to establish other. Wishing to be in love himself, he yeah. seeks also to in love other. Okay. Good. Bum -bum. So what does that mean? Uh, okay, okay. Well, uh. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if you want to be successful, you have others to be successful. If you, yeah, so means you basically have others. Like the, and the third one is that it is not far off. Who seeks it? He has already found it. it means that red is not very uh, mysterious things that you cannot have it when you're looking for it and you will have it. Okay? Okay, just like uh, Bible, you guys know Bible is the word from God. And so we so do so do we have the words from Confucius. Uh, so uh, the book is called the Confucian Analects. And here are some the classic quotes that I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, uh, the master said you should I teach you what knowledge is when you know things and to hold them to know it, and when you do not know the thing to allow you what to do know it. This is knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not confusing. So, can anybody tell me possibly what does that mean? What is knowledge? Okay. One of the most important things about knowledge is knowing that you do not know. So, it's the beginning of getting to get some more knowledge. Oh my god. But yeah, that's exactly <laughs> 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 oh, such a waste you're not Chinese. <laughs> okay, you can have this. <laughs> yes. So it's knowledge is by knowing what you know and what you don't know, then you can start learning things. Okay. The second one is superior is diligent in his work and careful in speech. Which you should do more things and be careful what you say because it may hurt people or say something wrong. And the third part, uh, no, the speeches are friendly to teach other mm. though, uh, to each other though they hold yeah. oh, different yeah. meanings. Yeah. The meanings are hostile to each other when they are blindly follow the others. It's very really obvious. Like the good people, they even though they have different thoughts, different opinions with you, but they can still be friends with you. But the means are just like they just want to follow others, but then being like mean to others. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, the more we study, the more we discover our ignorance, which, which is um, pretty similar to the first one. Like, you should know what you don't know, what you're going to do. And so, the more we study, with, the more we discover our ignorance, so we should always be humble to the world and everything. Okay. So, I hope that this is so confusing to you guys. <laughs> okay, then that's all. And we also prepared, besides Tang we also prepared some snacks, Chinese snacks for you. It's called Tang Hulu. And I don't know how it tastes. I hope it tastes the same. As Tang Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any Robert. questions, comments? We are officially young then. I'd like to add only one comment. There's a Hebrew proverb saying people are usually jealous. There are only two types of people that you cannot be jealous with, with your children and with your students. So it goes together with education with the concept of computers. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Um, if 
I, I traveled in China for about two and a half months. Uh, my impression of this country is amazing. All the culture is very different and really it's amazing, it's inspiring. Uh, so first of all, thank you for sharing with us. Uh, it's just really nice, really good. Uh, it's different to what we know. Uh, I like it. Um, and thank you for sharing that information and your culture. I actually want to give them something. Um. <laughs> I actually have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have a somewhat political question because, like, I mean, uh, of course, China is not really recognizing Taiwan as an independent state. But I think I read somewhere that also, like, European countries and the United States do not have embassies with Taiwan because they are afraid to get yeah. in trouble with China. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. I think there are only like a few countries in the world who actually really recognize uh, Taiwan as a independent state. I think, like, I mean, with where you have like also like embassies in both countries. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for example, Germany, I don't really know what the position of Germany is concerning that. I think we recognize Taiwan, but we don't have uh, political relationships. Like, That's the problem, because well, we, didn't join, uh, we don't join the United Nations. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's why, after the China com comes to uh, get into the uh, United Nations, uh, yeah, and, but we, we don't. Okay. We drop out. So. So you dropped out or you were never accepted to it? Uh, I think both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask, uh, what is your traditional sport in Taiwan? Traditional sport? sports? Yeah. Computer <laughs> game. <laughs> like in uh, Israel, it's like soccer. In, uh, Most people like soccer. That's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Taiwan has been the uh, World of Warcraft. Table tennis? Table tennis? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> In Taiwan, uh, baseball. I think it's the most famous. The baseball? In Taiwan. Also, to, 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 to learn that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before the recognition, I also have a comment that I would like to share. Um, I was, I told you that uh, most of my career was uh, in the USA and uh, we've been spending uh, 15, almost 15 years in the University of California, uh, <coughs> Davis near San Francisco. And um, when I came there, there was one of Chinese professor that I got to know and he became my mentor basically. <coughs> he was, really had a very uh, hard Chinese accent, so it was really out of understanding, but what caught me, he was the best researcher and the best teacher in the school. His teaching rating was always, I mean, no, no, nobody could compete with him. And this was kind of a you know, mystery to me because it was even hard to, to understand what he's saying. But really what I learned, I mean, he was really applying <coughs> constructive theory towards teaching to really I mean, a, a student felt it. He really wanted to help everybody. And he taught statistics, which is really a, probably the most difficult subject to teach in a business school, because it's very quantitative. But um, just to tell you what he did, I mean, I, I went to see his lectures, and his lectures were challenging. It's not that he gave students an easy time. But he used to come to school at, I think, about 7 o'clock in the morning, and stay there until midnight. He always have a table, a desk next to him. So he told the students, if you have difficulty, any difficulty doing the homework, just come to my office, sit next to me, try to do it, and I'll be there to help you. And this was seven days a week. So even, you know, Saturday and Sunday, wow. he was there. So he really gave his heart to the students. So even though he, they couldn't understand always what he was writing in the blackboard, and he had a big class, usually 50 or 60 students. But they really felt that he's giving, he's applying everything over there. And he was always chosen. He always get the best teacher award in the school. If he taught a class, always he would get it. So, you know, this is a great mentor. And I, I personally learned from him a lot. And also our tagline in the class is helping people help themselves and others. Maybe we should take, change it a little bit. Because what he said, yeah. if you help other people, you really but you need to also learn to help yourself first in order to be able to help others. So it probably goes both ways. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. This is delicious. Thank you very much.